Hello and welcome to my fourth uh, tutorial on Neon and in this tutorial I want to go over MIDI triggering and in particular launch modes, uh, how to launch clips via MIDI. Now as we add more and more features to Neon uh, such as these launch options here as you can see they, it, it's getting more in depth and more complicated and uh, the next version is going to introduce this new slice sequence uh, set of options uh, with uh, uh, quite a few uh, choices to choose from there and I want to go over them with you today. Now it's worth pointing out that these launch options are available via a shortcut by tapping and holding on the slice button. Now what you're seeing here is the default menu layout for version 1.06. Uh, we have changed the defaults for some of these but this is basically what you start off with when you create a new project. Now I'm going to go through these options one at a time, starting with the root note. And that is simply the MIDI, the incoming MIDI note that can trigger the sample on display. Now notice here we're not in slice mode. It works slightly different in slice mode. Now I've selected C3 here, so pressing C3 on this MIDI keyboard below will play back this sample. Now returning back to the launch options menu, uh, we can see the second option is the MIDI channel, which is currently set to all. If you wanted to choose a specific channel, you can. Uh, just simply select the uh, MIDI channel option and then choose a specific MIDI channel. But if you're using GarageBand or something like that, uh, you're best off setting that to all, otherwise you get weird things happen. Now returning back to the menu again, the next option is play mode and that's currently set to one shot. Now we have three options in here. Uh, the default uh, option is one shot which simply uh, plays back the sample uh, from uh, start to finish uh, in one go on one press of a MIDI note. Uh, if we choose say the gate mode, now this will start playing when a MIDI note is pressed and stop playing when we lift the MIDI note. Uh, this can be quite handy when triggering from a MIDI sequence. And the third option is toggle mode. Now in this mode, playback begins when we receive a note on and it ignores the note off. Playback only stops when we receive a second note on. Uh, so that's toggle mode. Now it might not be immediately uh, transparent or obvious why we have so many modes but I'll demonstrate those a little bit later. So the next item on the menu is launch start and this is uh, when the playback begins. Now currently it's set to immediate. Uh, if we set this to bar then uh, if we've loaded as a host AUV3 then playback will only begin when the host hits a bar boundary. Now since slice direction is to do with slices, I'm going to skip that for a minute and go to play direction, which is currently set to forward. If we set that to reverse and set the launch start back to immediate, otherwise we'll hear nothing, uh, and then press the C3 button, we'll see that the, uh, the, the sample plays back in reverse. Now that's all well and good, um, but if we take a look at that menu uh, in detail, you'll see that uh, next to uh, the uh, launch direction, you can see the B2, uh, which specifies a MIDI note, uh, which can be used to toggle playback. So if I set playback back to forward uh, and then uh, hit B3, it will play uh, the sample forwards. But if we hold uh, B2 and then hit B3, it will play backwards, so B2 becomes a modifier, a playback modifier. Now things become a whole lot more interesting once we enter slice mode, and we're going to go through that now. Now I've loaded a different sample here, and uh, just to make sure the uh, BPM is set correctly, I'm going to tap on the tempo and then long press on the tap tempo button, and that will configure the tempo uh, accordingly. So the first thing we want to do now is select slice mode and go and slice up this sample uh, into a number of slices. In this case I'll probably pick eight since uh, it's quite a large sampling length. And if you remember when we looked at the um, launch mode options before we had a, a root key, root note. 
and that root note was default to C3. Now in slice mode, it works slightly different. C3 is slice A, C sharp 3 is slice B, and so on up the keyboard. Now ideally I would turn on snap and go and uh, set some of those uh, endpoints so that we uh, don't get the clicking at the end of the samples, but for, for the case of this demonstration it's not important. But what I want to do now is go back to the launch options menu and I'll take a look at the uh, slice sequence menu that we skipped the first time round. Now by default it's on key, which means uh, it assigns a key to each of those slices. But if we change to random, then pressing C3 will randomize the next slice. So we just press the same key over and over again and it's randomizing a slice. So that's random mode. Now if we return again back to the menu and have a look at the next mode, you'll see it step forward. Now in this mode, uh, it depends on the key that we press as to which slice starts, but any subsequent presses of that key will play the next slice. So if I start on C3 and keep pressing C3, it will start on slice 1 and carry on going forward. If I uh, press a, a different key, it will start on that slice and keep moving forward and so on. I hope that makes sense. Um, step backwards is very much similar to step forwards, except in reverse. So I'll skip that one. Now, playthrough is very, very interesting. So basically you can trigger any slice using keys C3 and up and it will trigger that slice but instead of stopping at the end of the slice it will continue playing all the way through to the end of the sample so you get some kind of continuation there. So by re-triggering uh, different slices you can get some very interesting patterns uh, using that method. And the last option is round robin. Now this is similar to the random mode. The difference is that every slice is guaranteed to be played before it starts uh, repeating a random sequence again. So it, it kind of randomizes the slices and the order of the slices. Then when every slice has been played, it then moves on to another random set of slices and proceeds through them. And that way you guarantee that all slices are at least played once. Now currently we're in one shot mode, which means when we press a key, The slice only plays through once. Now we could turn loop mode on um, and the slices will loop but even better if we go back to gate mode. If you remember gate mode sounds when we press a key and it stops when we release a key. But if you listen to the uh, gate mode in conjunction with the random options And as you can see, when we get to the end of a slice, it simply moves on to another random slice. Now that was a round robin mode there, so let's try a playthrough mode and see what that sounds like. So hopefully you can see by using a combination of modes and sequence uh, uh, orders, we can get various types of effect. So it's a, a, a very uh, welcome um, addition to 1.06. Now, like I said earlier in this video, uh, the toggle mode, it has a specific use really. Uh, if we look at this uh, instance of Neon within AUM here, you can see this little button here, the launch button, which, uh, is a toggle basically it allows us to toggle at the launch of this clip and using launch in this way also snaps to a bar the nearest bar if that is enabled now when hosted as an AUV3 uh, Neon exposes uh, a few parameters which can be uh, used by the host application 
In this case, the reverse option, we can actually uh, stick a toggle on the display for reverse. So, normal playback, turn reverse on, and we get reverse playback. And finally, it's worth demonstrating something I couldn't show you in standalone mode, which is that the launch settings are currently set to start on a bar rather than start immediately. Now, when I uh, press a MIDI note on the keyboard and hold it, uh, you'll notice that it actually starts uh, on a bar boundary in sync with the AUM's transport. When you release a key, it stops at the next boundary. So, a very useful uh, feature that. Now if I flip into slice mode, these slices are not a bar long, so when I trigger them they finish early. Uh, but the next slice does not actually play until the, the bar comes around. So uh, yeah, that's uh, snap to bar boundary. And finally before we leave this subject, um, don't forget that the, uh, the reverse modifier key is available for use uh, when you're in AUV3 mode. Now, although, though this is off topic, uh, one other feature that's been added to uh, 1.06 is the ability to import whole folders now and file structures uh, from uh, the Files app. Um, and that is a, a big boost, I think, for anyone that has a big library of samples that they want to import into Neon. Um, yeah, so that's coming in 1.06. So that's just about it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, don't forget to thumb up the video and thanks for watching. See you next time.